But it's all legacy. It's what. It's what I'm saying. It's, it's all total legacy. Yeah. The High Wycombe people are desperate to hang on to High Wycombe. Why? The place is falling down. I don't think it have to be ill in that hospital. Please don't handle it. I know I'm, I agree with you about PFI. I know it's a lot of money I spoke to handle, but at least it's a decent hospital. And I think I'd rather go there than just go How High Wycombe has fallen I mean, apart. I mean, if you, if you allow me, I mean, yeah. first of all, and I've, I've always been careful to say this, the hospitals we've got, people within them are trying to do the very best they can, trying to give the very best care they can. And sometimes in circumstances that are not very easy to deliver care. And I know this because I speak to people who you know, work with them, and it's, it's, not, it's not easy. But the problem is, is that yes, there is this legacy, so you've got so many of about where the P is. Yes. Um, you know, it's there because the Canadian Army built it in the war. I mean, when I worked there, there were air raid um, shelters between the wards. Okay, and 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 so and you find Wexhams there because the farmer's daughter was looked after well at Upton, so he gave them a little field. I mean, I mean, who would put a hospital in Wexham? I mean, the road system. I mean, it's like nuts. I mean, if you've been to Stone Mountain, have you seen the road that serves that hospital? And then we've got Heatherwood. I mean, it, 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 the, 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 the sense of all of this, but it's because Heatherwood was the Astor family bequest. And it's legacy. No one's actually sat down and gone, right, okay, we've got these motorways, we've got these bypasses, we've got these growing communities. I mean, Brackle, Maidenhead, Wickham, I mean, they've grown in my lifetime. You know, I was born about, you know, about here. And, uh, you know, the numbers of houses that we've built, the, number, the population of growth, it's been huge, it's been immense. When did we get anybody going, right, okay, we're going to increase the population by a couple of hundred, 300, 400,000 in my lifetime. I should imagine it's double. Looking at my father, who was born in High Wycombe, I would imagine the population of this area is double in my lifetime. At what point did we say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll upgrade our hospitals then? Never. That has never happened. It's just been piecemeal. It's been, it's been no strategy to this. I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't manage to get here early enough to see your description there, but in, in your proposal, you, you have within your green line, which yeah. I imagine is, is the area that has a potential for service being serviced by the new hospital. Yes. But, but you have Royal Marks Hospital in it. Is it, uh, is it not true that Royal Marks is an equally large... It's not big enough. It's not it doesn't serve a big enough population. So it needs closing as well? No. In the plan, this is not included in the plan. Okay, in the plan I originally published, I chose to go with a merger of South Bucks and East Berkshire. Yes. Okay? The point I made, I think it was before you came in, Andy, is, is that actually I've never been waded to any particular location. What the whole thing was about was the need to consolidate acute sites. Yes. And what's happened is that now Heatherwood and Wexham is merging with Frimley. It's possible that this might come in by like, into play as well. Yes. And when you do that, you end up... You, 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 there's the epicenter of population about here, I think it's between 8, 9 and 10. Yeah. And, and so I included that because it clearly was in 20 minutes of here. I mean, like, yeah. of course, the lack of, the lack of, of space around that. Place. Of course, but I didn't get too. Wait, I don't want to be too weighted to one merger going to this. And it has to be here. This is more about saying, how do you design a healthcare service so that you can have one big hospital here or wherever on this this road, and then you go out spokes out to other hospital sites providing the community care that you've described, Andy. If you maintain an acute site here, an acute site at Frimley, an acute site at Royal Bar, a semi-acute site at Wickham, this, is, this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. This is the money for it. And it's not just that. Just having the, forget the money. I know money matters. Clinical outcomes. Do you survive on it? <laughs> Do you get better or not? Do you get the very best care or not? Have that in the forefront of your mind. Because that's actually what this is about as well. Is there anybody else? I'm just conscious. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I'm Manoj Bushtag, I'm the same. I was born in the area. Yeah, born in the area. Please, just wait for the microphone. Manoj Bushtag, the same. My question is that uh, whenever the hospitals are closed down, yeah. um, new hospitals are merged, well, there's always less um, beds in the new hospitals. Yes, but that's and not necessarily a bad thing. Isn't it? No. Because you you constantly, the, the, the desire is for people not to spend too much time in acute hospitals. A classic example is my father, all right, who, who had an abdominal aortic aneurysm repair last August. What were you in for two days, three days? Four days. Now, not so long ago, you are in for seven, 10, 14 days. So the number of beds isn't necessarily as important as you might think, but sorry, carry on. Um, it's just that um, I've, I've heard so many stories of people that were basically started before they were ready to go, and because they haven't got the beds, um, that's, you just hear it all the time, these stories. Yeah. And it's just, it's just worrying, you see. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not going to get too... I mean, I, I think it's about a thousand beds in my plan, and that figure came from, I've essentially have based this on the Norwich Hospital. The Norwich Hospital seemed about the same sort of size of hospital to serve this type of population. Um, I suspect if this one came into play, you're going to be up at that sort of level. Um, but I wouldn't get too worried about the specific number of beds. It's how you structure your care. When a number of beds get used by a patient three times in a day, so they've got day surgery and what have you. Um, so it's not necessarily a measure of a good hospital or whether the service is going to be there. It's got some relevance, but not as much as perhaps you might think. Um, one quick question. Um, after this meeting, what happens? I mean, will this consultation go? What's the next stage after this? Well, I mean, this is my own little sort of carnival around the area, basically. I mean, I'm, I don't have any power to say, right, we're going to do this. This has actually been an exercise in trying to go out to the community of the region and say, this is what I think. It has provoked uh, a response, I think, um, because I think people have thought, well, yeah, okay, this might have some merit. I've been quite encouraged by public's response. I've been less encouraged by government response. And so what will happen next is I've got one in Bracknell in April, which will be my final public meeting. Um, and then I've got some people offering me pro bono architectural help. There's some sort of sense of, of giving some sort of plan, some sense of what you can get on a site, how big the hospital would be, whether any particular site is more suitable than another. Um, I will then take that to the acute trusts and say, there you go, how about that? I think, uh, and then, I suppose my responsibility will be to keep lobbying up at Westminster and in Whitehall to try and get the Department of Health to actually have a strategy, um, because it's bereft of one, it seems, on this, in this area. Um, and then I guess the only other sort of strand to this, going back to what was said earlier, is that the people on the ground have got to try and build some momentum and some interest themselves. I, I mean, it's just me here and my research and my office can't do it really. I mean, we're not, in the, we're not set up for that type of campaign. Um, and you don't have the time to do it properly. But you need to set up campaign groups in different areas to lobby the commissioning groups. Because the commissioning groups are essentially the people who will be paying the bills in terms of the ongoing cost. The acute trusts are gonna be looking at their accounts going, right, well, how can we provide these services? I'm under no, I mean, no doubt they're gonna to have to consolidate at some point. The question is not about if, it's when. And it could be 10 years away, because it might be so they get dragged kicking and screaming to do it. I think it might be earlier than that. Um, and at that point, you see, because I've done the sort of well, M4, 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 M4. I'm hoping that that will then be, oh, well, that annoying MP has been going on about this for the last 10 years. Why don't we have a look at his plan? 
And the final thing I'll say is, is that what I didn't mention earlier is in 1989, um, Deloitte were paid um, to choose a location for the population of Facebook. This was just for East Berkshire, and they chose this location. And the then health authority ignored it, ignored the advice. And I didn't know that before I started on this. I, I was told by somebody who was the then chairman um, locally, and he said that they'd produce this report. So instinctively, I think location is here. It's some, it's, it's this sort of stretch. And, you know, I mean, where we're standing, you can get to Junction 8 9 quicker than you get to Wexford. I mean, that's the amazing thing about it. I mean, where we're here now, you'll get to Junction 8 9 before you get to Wexford Park. I'll tell you that now. See, most people are worried about uh, having enough facilities and uh, cutting down on the Beds and stuff because the population of such a slab is great. Oh, it is, yeah. There's a baby boom going on here. I know. Baby boom. It's Polish. And large numbers of people are coming here as well. In the next two, three years, there'll be thousands of, tens of thousands of people are going to come to Slough, from what I've been told. Yep. Here in Romania as well. Yep. And the services are really stretched quite a lot. And yep. so what I'm saying is that if we have, if you have cutbacks or you have less. This isn't about cutbacks. This is not about cutbacks. This is about structuring it in a way that's a better way of delivering care. Uh, um, don't see this as cutbacks. This is not austerity Britain. This is actually being driven by good medicine. Clinical care delivery. Um, you're right. I mean, one of the reasons that Heather and Wexham is financially, you know, position it's in is because maternity services at Slough are doing this. I mean, it's just, and it's mainly Polish and newer communities in, um, in Slough. And yes, I mean, Romania, Bulgarian, who knows? I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, and I think that this is, this, this, there's even more impetus to doing this because um, it's, the hospitals are out This afternoon, I, I, was, I worked as a GP today first time in six weeks, and I had a really sick child came in, and um, I had to refer them into hospital. It took five minutes for them to answer the phone, and eventually then I get a message saying, we're under pressure, and um, you know, we, we really, you know, we're, we're at maximum, we're, you know, we're at the full limit, blah, 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 and I'm thinking, does this make a difference to me referring my sick child? And that was a hospital um, not too far away from here. Um, and, and I just thought, you know, this is now. This is before all the baby boomers hit their 70s and 80s. This is before the migration that you're referring to. It, it, it's, if I thought we had a health service that, in terms of infrastructure in the area that was fit for purpose, do you think I'd be wasting my time? Gentlemen. <laughs> Um, just, just a quick point, really. Uh, Matthew Lewis, I am a healthcare strategist, so actually this sort of thing's bread and butter to me. Um, just a quick question, what's the reaction been like from within the health service itself? I noticed particularly there was a reaction from South Bucks about the proposals and their impact on uh, Wickham Hospital, and how positive has been the reaction from them? Um, it's not been so positive for Buckinghamshire. I mean, Buckinghamshire has a... Um a rich record of politics, it's health care delivery. Um, and I may be, um, and I have done, I thought this for a few months, I've, I've wondered whether I made the wrong decision in which ones I went for the merger with. And, um, and maybe I should have gone with that instead of going with Buckinghamshire. Time will tell. The local reaction in terms of, I mean, the Heatherwood and Wexham people have, they won't come out publicly set, but they've been supported because they've realised that well, they've got eight, they owe 80 million quid. Um, you know, it's, um, it was inevitable that they were going to have to merge. And all I did was I anticipated that when I started talking about this three years ago. Um, and guess why? It's because between 2005 and 2009, when I was selected in Bracknell, where did I work primarily? So now, what used to happen all the time? Wexham was under pressure, Wexham was this, Wexham was that, sorry, you can't, the patient can't go to Wexham, it's got to go to Hedoyle, it's got to, 
It was, I mean, it was just, it was death by a thousand cuts. And rather bizarrely in the middle of that, they got their foundation trust status. And that's an interesting story, which I encourage you all to pursue, journalists in the room. Um, and I, and I, so, it's been mixed, the response. The problem in the National Health Service is vested interest, kingdoms, getting people all to agree, which is why you need leadership on things like this. You need people from on high, sort of Stalin-esque, saying, no, you're doing this. Um, certain, there's a certain irony, actually, that a socialist healthcare system has a lack of central control. It is a certain irony in all of that. Um, but that's actually what's needed. Um, I'm positive about this. I actually think the feedback has been, on balance, more positive from the public and from consultants, who all themselves can also be a bit of a nightmare having a go at each other, or arguing about turf, that turf war over private practice and things. But it's been quite interesting how I've had different consultants from the same NHS trusts, one saying, oh, I can't believe you're doing this, and another one saying, keep at it, it's just what we need. And then within the same hospital. Um, so, you know what it's like. If you, in your job, you must have, there's so many layers of politics and vested interest in the National Health Service, which is why it's too big. It is too big. Um, but um, I'm positive about it. But I think it's more likely to be like that at the moment than up here. Because for some reason, Buckinghamshire, it, it seems a lot, you know, wants to look after itself. Gentlemen behind. Um, looking at the, the plan, it appears as though you had submitted to go to Maidenhead and effectively drawn a compass line around that area. Mm -hmm. um, it's not obvious to me how you, you decided on that. In particular, the green and yellow lines, very difficult to understand why they're so ragged. What, what is the specific criteria for these um, lines? These, is, is this distance from or time to travel to? So that's the 30 minutes. I mean, let me say, look, I'm not the transport supremo, but I've done 160,000 miles in my car in this area in the last 10 years. And these were the best guesstimate, having worked as a GP in pretty much the whole area, the best guesstimate of a blue light getting me to here. Your point about why the location, Heatherwood and Wexham, if I can get this right, where are we here? Actually, historically, it served this area. Okay, that's what it was supposed to do. That's how the health authority was designed, yeah? So you do that area, you'd think it would have been here, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it wasn't, it was up here. So actually, it was serving this area right in the top northeast corner. What it's now trying to do is to serve up here. So Beaconsfield, and like Cookham and what have you. The challenge though is, is that here is Hillingdon. So people say to me, well if you close Wexham, what about those people around here? And then you got there 15 minutes and the blue light to the Hillingdon. Like, at the moment, the people of Bracknell have got a 40 minute blue light to Wexham Park. 40. My problem is, I, I live on the south side of Bracknell. I live, I live on the south side of Bracknell. Yes, and to actually get to Wexham Park, where I've been referred, is oh. a six bus, yeah, it's six leg, it's journey, disgraceful, which yeah. takes something in the order of about four, five hours. If, if you don't, if, forgive me, sir, if you don't mind me telling you, why are you going to Wexham? What is it you're going to Wexham for? That's where I was referred to. So. Yeah, it's an outpatient for isn't it? Yes, exactly. I'm not even telling you that you're going to go here for your outpatient appointment, sir. I'm suggesting you're going to go to, the Bra to Bracknell for your application. There's already um, been... Do you understand, do you understand that, sir? Well, I do, but there's already been talk of uh, the uh, France Bridge being uh, underutilised and that they're, they're possibly going to withdraw it. No, 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 no. No, it's not underutilised. It's because the Royal Barts can't afford to get it out. The second floor is empty. Yes. It's actually also a building that's not really fit for purpose. They bought the building and then converted it. Okay, and they borrowed the money to buy it. And now they're finding it difficult to fund it. And there's also contractual problems with regards to local patients being using the services. You could only use the services in Bracknell if you're under the care of a Royal Berkshire consultant. 
the whole thing, it was actually, I mean, I inherited this situation show, this, this predates me, but you had a situation, sorry to get a bit parochial here, those who are not from Bracknell, but you inherited a situation where apparently I was supposed to be defending Bracknell Health Space, Brant's Bridge, and Heatherwood. Yes. That was the political advice I received in 2009, to which I said I'm not. How on earth can we have three sites within three miles? This is madness, we need one. Which is why, actually, this ceasing to be the case, I thought was good news, because it gave Brant's Bridge a chance of being an enhanced site. And if Heatherwood goes the way that it seems to be going at the moment, more sites can consolidate in Bracknell, sir. You don't need to go on six buses to Wexham. You can just go down the road to one site and you can have your outpatient appointment with your consultant. Because he'll do an outpatient appointment in Bracknell once a week and he'll rotate round. Because if he's a consultant here, he'll do one in Bracknell, he'll do one in Wickham, he'll do one in Slough, and he'll rotate round. He'll do all of his operating here or his cardiology interventional stuff, or whatever, all the clever stuff here, but he'll go around and see his patients. I think people at Bracknell see the removal of Edward coming soon, and Bradford's not really coming on the site, which yep. means there is a, effectively a vacuum around the, the yes. south. Which is why, in the plan, sir, you will read that I will not to be quiet if they try to close Heatherwood Hospital without implementing a full overview strategic plan like this. If they try to close Heatherwood and not actually replace it with anything, then I'll start getting annoyed. A bit stroppy. Yeah. And I've never said I wouldn't defend 